This project is trying to revitalize the link between craft and architecture, which were strongly intertwined in the past and in some traditional structures today. Specifically, I investigate the role of weaving in architectural design. Can we use weaving principles with common building materials other than vegetal fiber? And if so, can it still express the aesthetic value with structural honesty, as can be seen in traditional weaving? To start with, I simply look at the interwoven surface as a two-dimensional pattern. Many shapes emerge into my eyes. Some of them are the braids, the elf, the amps, and the linear compositions. I chose one simple rectangular shape to create a brick which can be assembled in the same way as the weaver weaves the bamboo. The bricks are interlocked and interwoven with one another. I fabricate groups of bricks in two colors to generate pixelated patterns. With these bricks, the wall serves as an aesthetic element that can express various motifs. At the same time, the interwoven configuration holds the bricks together as a self-interlocking structural system. For the second project, I look at the line composition from my emergent shapes as a wooden frame. I add a line as a wooden beam to see how a simple configuration can generate different frame design. And line by line, new shapes emerge. I also try to modify the angle to generate different compositions. A triangular wooden frame. The numbers of design possibilities are quite a lot. Just by modifying the angle or by using slightly softer materials, many different designs can be generated. I return this knowledge to the local craftsmen by showing them how I learned from their craft. It didn't take long for them to master this approach. Together we apply what we learn using the local timber. Simply by interlocking the beam as the weaver did, without nails, bolts and nuts, or CNC machine. They finish weaving the timbers in one day. No wonder, they simply use their own skill with stiffer materials in different scale. Beading takes advantage from the discrete properties of the bead and the continuous structures of the interwoven string. The question is, what kind of bead can I use in architecture? So I went back to my pen and paper to capture another shape. This time, I used three axial weaving patterns. And again, I saw different shapes emerge. I finally chose a simple hexagonal shape for a practical reason, and then applied the over and under configuration from the actual weaving plus mean over and minus mean under. So the hexagon has three sides facing up and three sides facing down. I use wire cutting techniques to fabricate the bit. I put the clay in the box, cut it with the wire, remove the material, 
fire them in the kiln and beat the wall the same way as the bead weaver does. The beaded wall is self-supported by the tension of the wire and the compression of the overlapping joints between the beads. We can adjust its opacity to be more transparent or more opaque, depends on how would you want the air and the sunlight come into your house. We can also make various ornaments by composing the beads in different ways. So here is my point. New design solutions don't have to replace the existing one. Instead, we can improve them to fit our current needs. And there are a lot to learn from traditional craft to do that if we just let our eyes to see them in different ways and blurred our disciplinary boundaries.